Yo, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Keith Perrin from FUBU CEO of FUBU Radio, and you're tuning in to Ring TV. You heard? Keep it locked right here. We'll touch that down. We got something coming for you. Hey, what's up? What's going on? You already know. This is yours truly, Remo Mabrak, man. Here in the building with the one and only Sharp Group. To my left, you already know who you are, so who you are, where you from, man, let me know it's what's your up. boy Keith Perrin from FUBU, CEO of FUBU Radio, mm. you know what I'm saying, we up in the Sharp Group offices, you know, FUBU offices, we doing a damn thing. Yeah, that's what's up, man, thank you for definitely letting me um, come here to interview you, nah, nonetheless, cool. man, uh, you know, I, me as a hip-hop fan, you know what I'm saying, I appreciate what the brand, FUBU brand has done for the culture, you know what nah, I'm saying, like, that. the clothing, the, the, the style, the essence, being that you, you're from Queens, that's my hometown, I'm from Laurelton, you know what I'm saying? All so, the rage. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, it's just, it, it's just it, it gives you that life, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Being from Queens, you get that life, like, ah, right, you know, another one of my own, made yeah, it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely, definitely. But let's really, let's really get to the nitty gritty here. Yo, let's, let's speak on this resurgence, man. Like, I know, yeah, it took some time off here and there with the brand and stuff, but as of late, you know what I'm saying? Now with the TV app, um, that was started three years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Also with the radio that you that you're doing now, mm -hmm. and also with the clothing line coming back, the um, joint adventures with Puma. Yeah. Like take like take uh, uh, my fans into that. Like the key factors of how that just came about. All right. So as I was talking earlier, yeah, on the prelims. Yeah, around 2008. You know when the whole market crash and everything. It was. Uh, it was a blow to everybody, you know, right. businesses, you know, as well as us, you know, doing what we were doing. And um, so we were trying to figure out what the next move is. Do we put out FUBU? Do we buy a couple of other brands? Right. Um, you know, what do we do? And at that same time, we were approached to do a, a, a reality show. Okay. And we were like, okay, cool. Everybody was with it. And then it was like, nah, I don't want to do the reality mm. show. You know what I'm saying? Because I got this other show that I'm, I'm possibly maybe working on. So around that time, he landed the, the Shark Tank um, mm. role. Right. So he was off and running and doing that. So at that time, we decided that, okay, since he's off doing that, you know, even us as a team, we work well as a team, but with four individuals who have different mindsets, you mm -hmm. know. So Jay wound up um, opening up and working on his FUBU TV uh, deal. So right. he, he got that going. Um, Carl has been working on opening um, Hotel FUBU. He's been working on that for the past three, four years, just trying to break ground. Um, I think we're really close to breaking ground. I, every time I talk about it, some kind of a hitch kind of happens. So we kind of leave it, you know, leave it as is until, right. it, until it comes to fruition. Um, and then me, I was kind of like the last one to really jump into it. Um, so I, I said my frustration with, with radio, the current radio stage, okay. brought me to the point where, you know, because I always liked music, I loved music my whole life, even when we did the whole FB Entertainment, we had our own record label, I was the COO of that, and we just had a ball doing it, it's just that we spent like five, six million dollars and didn't really make anything back, okay. you know, people jerking us around, overcharging us, it was, it was crazy. You know, that, that whole industry of shady is totally, totally <laughs> true. So we spent a lot of money on that and then felt like, okay, that's not our path. Um, you know, that's not what we were here to do. We're going to do these clothes and, and, and get this back on track. Right. And, you know, when that didn't happen by 2008, we all kind of went out separate ways. Okay. Um, but I started, uh, a friend of mine was just bugging me for about a good six, seven months. And like, hey, man, this is where radio's going. You know, it's going on. It's going online now. You know, these phones is gonna have. You know, people mm -hmm. will be listening to everything on their phones and right. blah blah blah. So, and that was around. I want to say that was around two two thousand thirteen. Okay. That he kept just hit me with it, and I said, you know what? We'll get to it. I don't have a space for a radio station right now. You know, we we were moving offices from the Empire State Building over here. Okay. So I was like, well, let me get over here and then figure out, you know, what's the situation going to be over here and we'll set everything up. When we came here, we had a couple of more people than we anticipated. Right. And the space got a lot smaller. So kept putting it off, putting it off. And then, you know, um, one of the things that Damon always says is, well, I put off today, 
I'm gonna put off to, why put off something tomorrow that you could do today. Right. So I just say, you know what? Let's just do it. Let's just let's just rock. Like we don't have a, a base right now, but we can put everything together and get things rolling. And then that's what we we did. We started out and, and, and we decided our lane would be a '90s era lane. Okay. Because everybody else was kind of if they were doing old school, they was doing new school. They were, you know they were kind of doing everything like trying to be like everybody else. And I felt like if we stayed in this lane, we can make our own, you know what I'm saying, our own traction. And, right. and you know, now we got 200,000 listeners, 200 plus thousand listeners a month. Okay. Um, checking us out all over the world. And, you know, with minimal advertising, because we still doing everything word of mouth. Um, it's just a great feeling. Okay, okay. And let's stick on Let's stick on to that. Um, with, with the growing process <laughs> of the radio, could you could you projectively see within five six years that it could possibly be a major um, market or a major media platform? Oh oh for sure for sure like the things I get from a lot of people out there right now is you know of course I'd never say like we're an online radio station I'd right never say that I say okay. I'm a radio station that plays online okay you know what I'm saying because not only will we we won't only have music we won't have personalities we're working on adding a bunch of personalities right now. A couple of different platforms as far as educational platforms to to, to put the, the word out to these to these kids and right. to anybody who can use it to prosper or uplift themselves. Um, so I think I think in a year or so, so that'll be about three and a half, four years, I think we'll be where we need to be. Okay. Alright, all right. Now, um, being you are from Queens, this is mm-hmm. my next question coming. Don't 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 hesitate <laughs> what you don't feel about it. In your heart of hearts, do you do, do the brand feel themselves that if there was a Mount Rushmore of Queens, would y'all be would y'all definitely be on that Mount Rushmore? Uh I mean I, I mean, yeah, we could be or we could be around it because okay. there's so many great people who came out of Queens. Queens, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like we grew up on Run DMC, LL Cool J, mm-hmm. Salt and Pepper. You know, all these cats that were from Queens right. that we idolized growing up. You know, I used to see Ella riding down the block. And I'm running to the street waving at him and shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, like a, a fan. You know right. what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm still a fan. Right. But not knowing years later that I would have the opportunity first, we used to go on tour with him, you know, just the cats from the neighborhood would all go on tour. Right. You know, and that's how I kind of got next to him, but not really... You know, on a personal level, it was just, hey, I'm with LL, I'm with, I'm with the guys from Farmers, we over here chilling, you know, wherever, wherever the concert was. But then years later after that, actually doing business with him and including him into what, you know, we had going on. You know what I'm saying? So once we did that, that was, it was over. But there's so many great people, right. you know, from Queens. Right. I could say we'd be in the building. You know what okay. I'm saying? I'll let somebody else put us up there, but right. I think we've we've solidified our step from, you know, coming from Queens, doing our thing, and, and laying the pavement for the next, you know, group of people to come through and, and take over. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. And also, too, um, let's let's talk about as far as what, what's the next move for the brand itself, as far as uh, philanthropy-wise. Like, with everything that's going on nowadays in the world, you know, a whole bunch of you know, attacks towards the youth, mm-hmm. you know, on all levels, from our phones to the unfortunate physical deaths, mm-hmm. you know, with, with Extension, the death that happened to him, yeah. you know, to Junior, you know, the unfortunate yeah. death to him. Like, what does the brand feel that they can do to, 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 help, to help improve things within society or even for that matter, at least to say, hey, you know what, we gave it a try to, 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 to embrace that, embrace the positivity. Um, well, the relaunch was something that was basically kind of forced on us. Okay. Our, our, our thought process was somewhere else. Like we were like, okay, you know, you're building this brand. I'm building this brand, Food mm-hmm. Radio. Damon is building his Shark Tank brand. Um, so when the whole clothing thing came about, it was more from, we've always had a connection with our customers. So it was more like, listen, I'm buying all this stuff from eBay. I'm buying all this stuff from thrift stores. You know, why don't you guys make some more product? You know, I know mm-hmm. it's been a while, and you guys haven't made anything in a while, but we need y'all to come back. 
So it was like a year of listening to that on social media. Wow. And after that, we were like, well, shit, maybe, you know, maybe we do a couple of t-shirts. Maybe do something, you know, put out some of the old styles. So what we decided to do was this style right here. Okay. This is one of our first shirts, right? Right. These two are one of our first shirts that we made in the house. Wow. We decided to do those two logos and bring those back out. Nice. So, People, being that people wanted all this 90s memorabilia and, and you know stuff that was was hot in the 90s mm -hmm. we just felt like okay that that'll work right now for us and we just threw out a couple of t-shirts and a couple of jerseys and, and hoodies and things like that right and then it started picking up we started gaining traction again you know people overseas started calling for collaborations um puma called for a collaboration right you know, like they we, we well one of my guys approached them to do a collaboration they, you know, they did one with us that put us in a, in a, in a great light with everybody to see, okay, these cats are still doing it. Mm -hmm. um, with the brand, I think as we grow back to, I don't know if we'll get back to where we was, but as we grow the brand, then we'll start doing other things and as far as the more community. things in the, com in the community. Right. Um, as we spoke earlier, mm -hmm. that's all I do is deal with the kids. Like, right. I try to deal with the kids on several different levels and just uplift them, show them that, hey, you know, I grew up on welfare, I grew up in the hood, you know what I'm saying? I might not have been in the in the, in the the PJs or the worst part of the hood, but right. shit, I remember going to bed hungry, you know, no heat, no hot water, no lights, like, I didn't been through all of that, roaches and all mm -hmm. kind of shit, you know right. what I'm saying? So, I always tell the kids, if, if you know, if you're going, whatever you're going through, it's nothing but choices that's going to get you out of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you make the right choices in your life, that right. will give you a path to something better. Now, if you want to get caught up with your friends and you're hustling and you're doing all of this, that you know where that's going to lead you to. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I've always tried to, to talk to the youth and, and educate the youth and just give them a, a, a sense of, you know, um, a sense of, of, of accomplishment from, from my part. You know right. what I mean? Like, hey, you know, I thought I, I wasn't going to be shit. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know what I was going to do in life. But if you apply yourself and you do what you need to do, then everything is achievable. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and, and without brand, it's never, it's, it, it's been about, you know, making money and making clothes and everything. But mm -hmm. for us, it's, it's been more about a movement. Like right. We, we've always said we sparked a movement mm -hmm. to, you know, the youth or the younger kids under us, or even the kids that was the same age that, that was like, yo, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to figure it out. You know, they seen kids that look like them. And they were able to say, okay, well, shit, this, this cat looks just like me. I you know, he can do it, I can do it, you know? And then when we, once we sit down and we talk to him and, and give him that, that blueprint, it's like, man, that's all y'all did? All right, well, shit, if I stay focused, I put the right people around me, right. I could do the same thing. Right. And, you know, so as far as is, is the philanthropy part of it, I think we're going to get there. And, you know, we've done a lot in the past, right. but we need to do more move going forward. You okay. know what I'm saying? So we have that definitely. I mean, you know, I think Damon just did something with the uh, the immigrant kids. Okay. Did some stuff with them last week before he went out of town. So, you know, we constantly do something. And there's some things we do we don't talk about. Right. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? We just, we just do it. We don't really talk about it. And that's right. kind of how we've always been where... You know, I remember pulling up on Parsons, right? <laughs> we had two tractor trailer loads of turkeys, right? We did, we did Baisley, we did Forty, we did, um, we did Parsons and Archer at the train station. So when Cash was getting off the train station yeah. you know, for, for the yeah, holidays, right there, yeah. right there, you know, the, you know, the van or the bus and go home with your turkey. And this lady said to us when we were over at uh, Baisley, she said, "You know, why you guys ain't got the news cameras out here?" And, and show what you guys are doing. And I'm like, listen, it's not about them. It's about you. Mm -hmm. As long right. as you know what we're doing, we That's okay. But she's like, yeah, but they want to focus on all the bad and the killing and the this and the that. When cats are doing good in the hood, they don't want to be around that. And I'm like, hey, well, you know, it is what it, it is. is. Yeah. But as long as you know I'm doing good. That's what matters. That's what matters to us. It's not about a publicity stunt. Nowadays, oh, man, everything is about posting up what you did. Like, you know, and we like to move in silence sometimes. Like, we just do it, keep it moving. And if you know about it, you know about it. If you right. don't, it's cool. Well, hey, well, I mean, that, that's the reason why I got 25 years plus <laughs> of success. So, you know, why not keep it going? You know what I'm saying? Why change the recipe 
for everybody else. You know yeah, what I mean? you can't, man. You gotta like, like even with the station, I gotta stay in my lane. This is what I'm trying to do with this ninety era thing, and I'm trying to. I call it the golden era. So yeah. that's, that's yeah. you know, because well, some will debate you. Some hip hop people will debate you, but I, you I know I, why I, I say it's the golden era mm-hmm. because the eighties was what the 80s was. Everybody was trying to figure it out. Right. You know, there was a couple of cats that figured it out. Yeah, right. And by the time they figured it out, late 80s, the LL Cool J's, the Rock Kim's, the Big Daddy Kane's, the EPMD's, mm-hmm. when they figured it out and had it blazing, you know what I'm saying? It was already starting to turn over into the 90s. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. So then you had the, the NWA, mm-hmm. you had, you know, Tupac, you had Biggie, you had all these other, Nas, you, you know, Nas, you had, you had Jay, you know, you had all these, these Cats that was coming in the game that changed the game. Oh yeah, by far. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Time. Like they changed the the monetary part of it. You know, where cats was getting you know maybe ten, twenty thousand dollars a show, or, or or you know jumping on a record. Yeah, you give me five thousand, I do a verse on your thing. Now cats is getting a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. In the nineties, cats is getting two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand dollars for a verse. Right. You know, so it, it it it's a lot of lot that happened in the nineties. We've seen a, a lot of stuff go on in the 90s with the killing of Tupac, with the killing of Biggie. Like, I was dead big the night Biggie got killed. I was in the building. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? Me and, me and David was in the building. And it was crazy because when we were there, you know, Biggie and Tupac, like, it was, it, I mean, Biggie and, and Puff was sitting right across from us. We at this table, they sitting across the dance floor at the next table across. Damn. So... We were like, yo, we should sit there. That's when Biggie was always rapping about Don Perignon. Mm-hmm. So he was like, yo, yo, baby, let's get a bottle of Don, sit over to Biggie, you know? So the waiter walked over to him, he gave him the bottle, he looking at him like, and he pointed. So when Biggie saw us, he was like, put the bottle up, we put our drinks up, like, all right? And then towards the end of the night, which was maybe about, I want to say like 30, 45 minutes later, we're leaving and we get outside. Now we got our jewelry on and everything, so we get outside. And it's just me, Damon, and the driver. So as soon as we step outside, you know that old ghost face saying, you can feel it in the air? As soon as I walked outside, you know, I'm, I'm a street dude, we from Queens, you know, we, we watch all the cars go yeah, by. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know what I'm saying? So, yeah, facts. so I, walk fact. out, I walk out the building and I'm looking around and I'm seeing Cash just standing posting up that just looks strange to me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, so D is like, yo, yo he tell the driver, go, go get the car. You know, because we was going to this after party for the joint. And as Gold, my, the driver got rest his soul, was going to get the car, I looked around again, I said, D, come on, let's go. Right. He was like, what? He's going to get the car. I said, nah, we all going to get the car. You know what I'm saying? Because we standing there, we got jewelry on. Like, I wasn't even thinking about any killing or anything. I was thinking about getting robbed. Oh, he was just cat standing around looking weird. So I said, come on, let's go. He, so he's like, all right, cool. We walked to the car. Get in the car, pull off. By the time we got like four or five blocks away and turned up, our phones was going off crazy. Yo, what the hell's going on? So, you know, at the time we had the two way. Yeah. You know, um, no, it wasn't even a two way joint. Nah. It was the, um, it was a phone. We had phones back then. We had these big ass phones that we used to have. And cats would start blowing us like, yo, 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 we got killed. I was like, yo, we just said, what are you talking about? So by the time we got to the party that night, Cash just started coming to the party, bawling, crying. He was like, yo, what the hell happened? We didn't find out what happened. Like, we didn't want to party. We didn't want to stand that way. You know, we just wanted to get the hell out of there. We called it the, the, I called the, the, um, the cat that reserved all our trips that night, the travel agent. I was like, listen, Mark, if you can get us a flight out here tomorrow, man, we're supposed to stay on Wednesday. And it was Sunday night. And we was like, you see if we can get us a, a flight out here tomorrow. And he was like, all right, I'll see what I can do. Um, he called, you know, he called us in the morning and said, hey, I got your flight, one o'clock, whatever, and, you know, because we didn't want to even be there, like, it was, it was so somber, we didn't even want to be there, we was like, we out, man, like, this is crazy, like, this is getting crazy, so we've seen all those different elements happen in hip-hop, and then see all that tragedy to see it start to come around again, you know what I'm saying, they keep going, they keep going, now you've got the youth, um, and I know sometimes I, I, I might dog the youth a little bit, but, you know, um, like I was telling you earlier, I saw something that, that made me really kind of, you know, understand them a little bit better. You know, when Kid Capri was like, yo, these kids are doing the same thing we were doing 25, 30 years ago. You know, they trying to figure it out. So don't be, don't bash them. Yeah. Just let them do what they got to do. So 
you know, I don't ever want to be like, hey, I, I, I hate this rap that the kids are doing because, you know, I actually love it. Like, the Migos, I'm jamming to the Migos. Every time the song comes on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I'm not, yeah. I'm not hating on anybody, yeah. but I just don't want them to forget about this era that sometimes they choose not to go back to. You know okay. what I'm saying? They think it's just too old and it's not. It's yeah, really right. Old, you know? Like, all right, so <laughs> that's definitely a, a lot of this is going. Let's definitely keep going with it. So basically, with the Fubu Radio, it's basically almost like a like a, a time machine esque, if you want to say, mm -hmm. type of platform. So with that platform, do you feel that it, you could compete with the other mainstreams? Like, do you feel is there a point where I right, you're gonna stop and then feel okay? I gotta convert to making a hybrid, or is it straight yo full fledged? It's gonna be straight of that it's, era. We gonna keep it. In that era, okay. what we do do is we play rap from, we, we stay 10 years behind rap. Okay. Right? Okay. So every year we go up. Right. I go up. Okay. And I add more songs. But the, the difference is I have the ability to pick and choose mm. what I want you to hear. So there's certain artists that I really like or I think that, that really need to be heard or really need to be on our station. I can pick and choose. It's not like I got a playlist and I'm just like, okay, here, boom. Play this, you know what I'm saying? I can play whatever I want to play. With the R&B, is since R&B is timeless, I oh, go from 1990-ish. Sometimes mm. I go back to the 80s with you know Ooh. little Patrice Russian, and you know I get back into all of that. You know, I, sometimes I go back into all of that. But we go up to the current year. Okay. So I, I'm playing boot up. You know what I'm saying? But then I'm playing a little Medicine, you know? But then I can play a little Angela Wimbush. You know what I'm saying? So I could I could play with it. You know right. what I'm saying? And that's the that's the best feeling to me about controlling the station right now. I can control what I want to hear. I hear something I haven't heard for a while. Shazam! <laughs> <laughs> Go home and I'm on the computer like, you know, I have an extensive library, you know, I'm talking terror and terror and terabytes of music that I can just punch that in and okay, I got you know, if I don't have it, I go get it. You know, so it's just it's just the ability to do that. You know, and 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 all my frustration came from, you know, the early days being in LA where we would travel from the airport to Beverly Hills, and it was just so much music that he would that they would play, and I was like, this is LA. I'm expecting to hear all LA, you know, or West Coast artists. Right. And I'm hearing East Coast artists. I'm hearing Down South artists. I'm hearing you know, a little E forty over here, and then go back, and then they, I mean, they just play different, you know, just different music, you know. And around, I want to say maybe a year or two after that, that's when they all came with these playlists. Like, okay, I guess I don't know if it was Radio One or whoever bought all these stations up and just said, okay, this is the playlist across the board. Like I used to love going to Chicago, hearing what Chicago had to offer. I love to go to Memphis and see what Memphis had to offer because they were also also play their local artists right. along with the you know with the regular artists. So mm -hmm. the, the artists that you 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 come to, to to know. But once that whole consolidation thing came and everybody was like, okay, this is the playlist for all the radio stations. That's when they they just went wrong with that. Damn. You know. All right. So yeah. So it definitely sounds like you definitely trying to make a breakthrough. Mm, of, yeah. of the fuck shit, let's keep it a buck. It is what it is. I cursed and I said it. <laughs> of the fuck, of the fuck shit, and and really trying to get the essence back. Yeah, man. It's, it's like I said. It's just a lot of music that, you know, that there is to to hear and to and, and for us to offer that you really don't hear them. Well, even back in the days, remember we used to have old school in here. Oh man, Mr. C wow. used to. <laughs> so now, I mean, you would even go back to Mr. Magic with that. You know what I'm saying? Like. But it was just that one hour yeah. that they would play every day. Then they get back to the playlist or back to the, the hot top 20 songs or right. 40 songs or whatever it right. is. And like, my frustration is not wanting to hear one song on one station and then turn to another station and the same song playing on the, same, on the next station at the same damn time. No and then, variety. You know, and then I was forced to, to buy satellite radio. Like, without satellite radio, I'm listening to CDs and... and, right. and you know, media off my phone all day, all day. I'm just, I can't even get in the car and listen to two stations anymore. Like this. Yeah, it's pointless. It's pointless. It's pointless. You know, but um, we do 
offer, we're going to offer more than just music. We got personalities coming on. Um, you know, we're trying to do a couple of shows. Like I was speaking earlier about the tech show. Right. You know, something with these kids. You know, because I'm, like I said, my little nephews and nieces and cousins, two, three years old, on my iPads, all in the back of the system, doing all kind of crazy things. I'm like, dude, you're like three years old. How do you know how to do all of this? Like, you're showing me, oh no, wait, wait, keep going. Go oh, back here. And mm -hmm. I'm like, wow. So, you know, with these video games that these kids love to play, there is a market out there for it. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, is it the cool market? Well, you know what I'm saying? I mean, oh, yeah, I'm a rapper and, and, and you design video games. Right. You design, you know, MTA apps or whatever right. it is. Like, dude. But they don't know what the, the financial policy is. They don't understand. If you could design and put your name on a couple things and you could sit back and just get checks coming all day. Right. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to leave your house. Mm -hmm. You know, but. You know, a lot of a lot of people don't understand that they they just think that they have to be out there and doing all one hundred percent and working on, you know, being a rapper or a basketball player and it's so, such, you know, or mm. or just in sports in general. Like I'm not knocking anybody's hustle. Yeah, right, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Whatever right, 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 right. you do, but I also want people to know that there's different yeah, I mean, avenues that yeah, you can go far. down and, and make a lot of money. I mean, that's life. I mean, you know, in life you have to venture into what benefits for you mm -hmm. to be successful period mm -hmm. but in the same token don't you know don't trap yourself or don't succumb to thinking oh you know if i don't become a basketball player then that's it that's it it's over and being a geek i'm sorry I, i'll tell you I, I was a i was a geek i'm not gonna <laughs> lie to you i was you know you know my brothers and them they grew up you know in Laurelton, uh -huh. you know doing what they doing rapping cooling yeah. flashing and all that but yeah I, I was a geek, you know, I was on video games, cool, I was on man. Ninja Turtles, I was skateboarding, I was, you know, drawing and stuff like that, but cool. I feel, in our society, I feel like we lost, you know, that essence of, of letting somebody know, like, it's cool to be that, you know yeah, what I'm saying? You know what I, I think, too? Remember back in the days, we used to have communities. Oh, man. You know, like, neighborhoods, like, neighborhoods used to raise you, mm -hmm. you know, due to ec the economic times today. You know, you might only be in the neighborhood five years the most.